Sunday, December 13th, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This is the light in the woods as I'm just in the entrance of Totem Park Trail that leads right over to the Indian River. Hello, this is Gail Ferris, your narrator, and I'm out to show you something very interesting, how things change. We have just had a rainstorm. Here is a diverse colony of lichens and mosses, so interesting to look at. This is an assemblage of mosses and lichens on tree bark, and they are able to grow on tree bark because there is consistent very light rain constantly hydrating the bark contributing nutrients to them. So we wind up with a plethora of incredible lichens and mosses here. A cool rainy forest. Here at this latitude it is, and altitude it is a temperate forest, rainforest. We have a grand proliferation of berries, and here is one that is a low-growing lignin berry. Up above is a type of blueberry. On the ground is this exotic moss. Just fascinating to look at. Mosses and ferns everywhere. And you can tell the nutrients available in this rock by the proliferation of these mosses and lichens. This rock would have to be very high in phosphate. It's so much fun to see how these mosses colonize all of these rocks. This is probably some sillimanite coming out of a gray whack matrix in the rock. This is a very common moss polytrichum. And this is what it looks like here in Sitka, Alaska. The bright sun is causing the moisture to vaporize. So you get to see the transfer of moisture. And we had some snow last night. Which has survived so far. Wherever the sun is shining Everything is melting, and where it's in the shade, it's just staying. The dominant species of all of these berries in the Vicinium family here is amazing, along with things in the Ribase family, and this happens to be salmonberry, which goes all over the place. It really enjoys this climate and the kind of soil. Another very curious plant, I think a moss. I have to go and identify it. I'm sure it's a bryophyte. It's a lichen. It's amazing how big it is. Just amazing. And it can grow on a branch because there is so much moisture in this area. Lichens and mosses can colonize little branches. This is a root, believe it or not. Trees in this area have very shallow roots and they just kind of sprawl themselves over rock. The soil here is just 
plain volcanic ash. So the roots just kind of grow on the surface and they survive because we have such frequent rain. Okay, here is a trunk and here's a living root. Here is the remains of what was put here. And these pieces of wood are just fully colonized by all kinds of... Whoever can grow on it will grow. Aside from mosses, even vascular plants will just grow out of the sides and all over wood. These logs were cut down who knows when, but this is what's become of them as the forest is just gradually taking them right over. These mosses are so large. They are exotic in a lot of ways. And in among them are tiny plants as well. Here's this, this small branch that's fallen off and it's fully colonized by lichens. Here is a fern just growing out of a stump. This is the color of the water today. It's amazing the color of the green in this low angle winter sunlight. We're getting close to the shortest day of the year, which is 10 days from now. The low angle of the sun drastically affects how colors show. This is fun to look at this moss with its fruiting bodies. And just further down, character and it's totally different. Completely different. All growing on the same fallen tree. And it's just from my breath. Just amazing. It's very chilly right here in the shade. This is such a delightful experience. Who grows where? And why? That's what is fascinating about this woods in the Indian River or Totem Park here in Sitka. Just look at how this wood is being colonized by moss. In this brilliant light, these opportunities are so special. I get to see things in great detail because of this wonderful, brilliant light. Here we are with a great range of clouds. Right now, the sun is out, but who knows? Because over there, you can see rain coming down. And the smorgasbord of clouds in this air and goes very quickly as it goes in among these mountains. Well, right now we happen to have raking sunlight. And these trees don't mind colonizing this log that washed up quite some years ago. They were logs that were on the way to the pulp mill. Never got there. Really quite an array of the gigantic log right there. And look at what is growing all over it. Just amazing. Please don't wait around for anything to rot. They just jump on and grow anyway. The vast swirls in this log are highlighted by the snow and the wetness of the wood. If this log were to be dry, you'd never see any of this. But this is now showing. And out on the water are the various old winter ducks. There's a good source of food here, constantly available. What we are looking at right now is a shallow area, and that's why you're seeing these waves rolling up. Just coming in, because it's a shallow. Here's a group 
of trees and mosses all living on this log. Because the sun is nice and bright today, I'm noticing these details. On a cloudy day, I'd probably walk right by this and hardly see a thing. But my camera is capturing this for us to look at and enjoy. These are mosses. They sure do look like ferns, don't they? They are mosses, which is kind of fun to think about. Here's a lichen. Who would ever believe that an innocent little bryophyte to be this big. Look at this log. It's just covered end to end. And here's this one right next to it. And it's also just covered. Once in a while there's a little area that has broken out such as here. And then I'm looking at this little area wondering, oh, what is that? It's wood chips from a saw. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did look a little weird. What is special about this particular light is it's reflected off of the water as well as coming directly from the sun. And that makes it very unusual, the spectrum. It's so fascinating to be right on the edge of salt water, on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. And yet, everything is just fine here because we get so much rain. And then out underwater, we have all of these ducks. Here's some interesting colors to the clouds and the shapes. So one thing we have here, fascinating cloud formations. I'm coming around to look at Mount Edgecombe. We are having an interesting array of weather coming through our island mountains. And that's why we're having some wave action. We have endless colors and choices of gray. You can see the water is coming in shallows and it's swinging around. 
an underwater peninsula. I am right in the Kixati Fort site. The light is playing on the water from between the clouds up above. See these waves? They are reflecting what's up above in the clouds. That's why the color spectrum is exactly what it is. Very interesting to see. Crisscrossing waves. Beat that. Depends on who's running the show, which one is higher than which on the crisscross. It's all about the cadences. There you go. <laughs> that would be fun with a kayak. You run down there, be like a cougar boop. This is sort of clopatus. There you go. Another one. Just great fun. It's all about the shallows and the source. And the sky above, which is causing the waves to look these colors. Fascinating. Endless diversity in gray. Hard to believe. One thing I like about this place is it never gets boring. There's always, <laughs> yeah. always something happening in the sky. It doesn't stay just one way, yeah, that's which true. is kind of fun. <laughs>